Now, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. 737 with the morning majority. Barry Catherine's still out, and Karen Henretti is uh, filling in. Trevor Maddox is on the line. Redskins Report is brought to you by Fork Union Military Academy. So, Trevor, I have to say the Redskins played well yesterday, but what I want in the offseason is a new rule or league mandate that we have to extend the height of field goal posts. Because I'm still not convinced that kick went in. It probably would have hit the post. Probably it may have, you know, kicked back in. But we we see this all the time in college football and in professional football. Why not just why not just you know put them up 15 feet higher? You know what? They could do that uh, structurally. I don't know what it could, would do, but you know what else they could do is just put some sort of a, a laser device yeah. or something yep. uh, to extend it to infinity. I mean, there'd have to be a way to not blind pilots flying over. <laughs> but you know, because you know, I agree. I don't think it went in either. And certainly, if they had been five yards deeper, uh, I think it would have it would have definitely clearly missed it. And they could have been five yards deeper. Remember what happened on that field goal in overtime for the Cowboys. They didn't have any timeouts left. The play clock was winding down. And Tony Romo jumped up and tried to call timeout. Right. Well, that would have been a delay of game time. Sure. It would, would have pushed him back five yards. Because they didn't have any timeouts left. That's right. But, but Mike Shanahan, the Redskins coach, wanted to ice their kicker. So at the same time, Romo was trying to call timeout without any timeouts left. Shanahan looked to the official on the sideline and called timeout himself, which is a legitimate thing to do. Right. It's not Shanahan's fault. He didn't see Romo doing what he was doing. But it's just one of those quirks that, that have been going against the Redskins all season. All right, so the first quarter, they stuck up the joint. I mean, they just they looked really rough. I said, oh, man, this is just going to be a runaway. But then... They came back, and I got to say, you know, I, I sort of, I sort of was impressed with the play of Rex Grossman for most of that game. And you were right to be. He started the game two of six in passing for two yards, two of six for two yards in the first quarter. Uh, after that, he was twenty-three of thirty-two for two hundred and eighty-seven yards. And That's so not he, bad. He really picked it up and showed a lot of mental toughness because really. Playing before a home crowd that was ready to boo him lustily, you know he, he he did what it took, and it wasn't just dump off passes. He pushed the ball down the field. He showed a lot yesterday. And so so then you get down to, to overtime, and and you know, everybody's has some hope here, and you actually even win the toss. I don't know what the statistics are, but most of the time the team that wins the toss actually wins the game in overtime. But they didn't quite I don't pull know it out. True or not. I, I think it is. I'm going to look that up. But I, but here you have an opportunity, and they just couldn't get it done. I mean, I don't blame Gano. I do. Uh, well, I don't blame him completely because look, uh, uh, you put him in a position where he has to make what a 52 yard yeah. field goal. That's a low percentage shot. But but he but here's the problem, Trevor. In my opinion, he always misses the clutch kicks. Well, he, he certainly has got to start making some clutch kicks, or else that impression uh, will continue to be out there. But but I think, the, and you're right, I mean, the, the opportunity was there to win it. But think about what the Redskins did. They had lost five games in a row and lost those games being very meek, philanthropic to the other team, it seemed. Not that they weren't trying to win, but that they just, they, they, they just worked together. You know, they couldn't, they couldn't, they weren't good enough. They just weren't good enough. Well, in this game, the Cowboys seemed to put the dagger in the Redskins by scoring that late touchdown. But what did the Redskins do? They had a last-minute drive where they scored the tying touchdown with 14 seconds to go, got the ball in overtime, drove it down into a makeable, difficult, but makeable field goal. Mm-hmm. So, yep, Grand Gano missed that field goal, but what we would be talking about had he made that field goal was the rest of the Redskins and all the good things that they did. And so they, they really showed, they, they showed that they were progressing. They just got better for the first time in a month and a half yep. as an entire team instead of just individual components. Yeah, the one thing that they just couldn't get the Cowboys off on third down. I mean, every, every scoring drive that they had, they and they made a couple of touchdowns on third downs. They just they could not stop them on third down. Yeah, Brian, and that's a great point. And that's something the defense talked about after the game. They statistically have been doing quite well in most areas. But one of the areas where they've struggled is getting defenses off the field. Last week, Miami had about a 50% completion, or excuse me, conversion percentage. Uh, the the uh, Cowboys today were 47%. 
typically 40% third down efficiency is considered winning football, or mm-hmm. well, 47% not quite good enough. So you're right about that. And the defense is very frustrated because the offense has not been giving them points. In the last three games before this one, the Redskins combined for 20 points. Mm-hmm. Well, they gave the defense 24 points today, and the defense couldn't turn that into a victory, so the defense isn't happy with themselves. Left tackle, Trent Williams, out. Uh, how bad is that injury? Don't know. I, I've had that injury. It's a medial collateral. It's the injury of the, the um, uh, ligament on the inside of your knee uh, pointed at the other knee, you know, and he'll have an MRI today. Um, but that's a key position. It's a key position, and it's a tough injury to play with. Uh, mine was a second degree, so it wasn't fully torn away. It did not require surgery, but almost. I was completely unable to do anything for two weeks, and then I was quite limited for the next two or three. Well, that's getting close to the end of the season, so the Redskins will have to figure out who they will put out there at left tackle, likely Sean Locklear. But Sean Locklear is a big drop-off from Trent Williams. All right, uh, D'Angelo Hall taking a lot of criticism, or I mean taking a lot of blame, personal blame for the law, saying that if he were in the front office, he would cut him. <laughs> he would cut himself. Um, yeah. um, d- you know, d- how much blame does D'Angelo Hall have in this game? I don't think it was a whole lot of blame. No, yeah, he slipped. He slipped on the field, yeah. and people slipped. You know, he he was covering their best receiver, Des Bryant, on that overtime play that Romo, where Romo hit Bryant to get into field goal position for the game-winning field goal, which they then made in overtime. And but he slipped. He didn't. He didn't. You know, miss an assignment. It wasn't a mental mistake. It was one of those things. Uh, problem was, it's Pat Mitch matched with the last time they played Dallas in Dallas. He also was covering Des Bryant on the key play to put Dallas in position right. to kick the game-winning field goal, and he missed that one, too. And so, you know, the two together, uh, pretty frustrating for him. All right, Trev. Good to talk to you. Have a good Thanksgiving, and we'll uh, do it again on Friday, all right?